But thank you for coming today and yell at me if I have to stay in a box. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am Gwen Rupert. Um, I've been around for a long time, not a native of Allen County, but a native of Whitley County. And when Jerry asked me a while ago if I would speak, I said, sure. And as I'm sitting down and trying to get things together for today, I'm like, what do I talk about? What do I talk about? I've never really considered myself to be a leader or to be this big, big personality or big person, but I do like to get things done when I see a need and move things forward. And I really felt the Lord telling me that it's about the story. It's about the story. Everybody has a story. And when we talk about your story, I think we have to break it down into chapters. And then those chapters turn into paths. And those paths turn into legacies and how you grow and how you change. And I, I go back to my probation officer days and seeing people change. And that's why I got into the business of, of being a probation officer is to be a change agent for folks, help them change their lives and move things in the right direction for them. But it's another thing when you talk with your kids and everyone else around you, right? We all have stories. And what I wanted to hope I can share with you all is that no matter how small our our spaces are, or how we don't think we are that important, we are. Our stories always impact someone, regardless of what that story may be. So what I want to do today is kind of take you on that journey with me as to how my story has evolved, how I've become what I am today, and then obviously hopefully continue to improve upon. But we all have, oh, it left. There we go. And I consider it as we're always editing something. We're always editing and changing things. But let me start you with, do I have to go left? Go to right. There we go. How many of you have gone through pictures? <laughs> right, right? I sat down, I'm getting my boxes out, and my husband goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm trying to get pictures. But with these phones, you know what it's like to try and find old pictures and boxes and get them out? You're like, oh my gosh, and the Polaroids? <laughs> yeah. So I come from, this is my great grandparents, my great grandma and grandpa Bechtel. That's me right there in the front in the blue sweater. My little, one of my little brothers there and up on the side. Anyway, the Bechtels are a huge family out of Wabash and Huntington County. And being part of that family, my grandfather was one of 11. So my dad was probably not much younger than some of his uncles, just because of that vast expanse. My grandfather was one of the oldest. But what I learned from that large family, just a little story, and forgive me if, I, if you think I'm a hick after this, but <laughs> what I remember from that family and the big 11, community was huge. Um, my grandparents, I think, were second-generation German immigrants. But one thing we did almost every year, they were big farms. And it was either at my grandpa's or it was at one of my uncle's. But every year, we butchered pigs. It was a big deal. Everybody was there. All hands on deck. There were stations, literally stations. I had uncles that were in the truck that would kill them. Then we had another station where they were skinned and another station where nothing went to waste. I will never forget my dad always telling me the only thing that went to waste was the squeal. Everything was used. <laughs> Everything was used. The big kettle making the head cheese, using the intestines for the sausage, everything. But what I learned was community was important. Family was important. Because that big operation did not work if everybody wasn't there. That was part of it. The other thing was we don't take things for granted. That was the family as well. We wanted to make sure things were used and we didn't waste anything. But we did that for a very long time until my grandparents passed. The other big lesson from there is how many of you still get together on a regular basis with your extended families. A couple, not very many. 
That's another thing I truly, truly miss, that I wish our stories, at least my story, would continue with that. Because family's really important to me. Because if somebody's not there, who do you count on the most? It's your family to be there, right? That was always something with that side of the family, and even on my mom's side of the family. I'm the oldest of 27 grandkids on my mom's side. We would get together all of the time, every Christmas, everything. So community and family is extremely important. Not only do they shape who you are, but they're also your safety net, always a safety net. So the big Bechtel family taught me a lot. I will also say Grandma Bechtel, you can never make really good sugar cookies unless you're using real lard. And I don't care what you say, you can't find it anymore unless you can find a farmer that's willing to part, part some with you. But the best sugar cookies that way. And then dating myself. Yes! You were missing out if you did not have underoos when you were a kid. Right? Linda Carter was my hero. I absolutely loved Wonder Woman. And I think part of my draw to her was not only just the cool flashy outfits, but the ability to be bigger than herself and to help people. My brothers and I, and I spared them. I did not put the picture up here with all three of us. <laughs> Most of them out. But being the oldest of the three, we had at the time the old LPs, and I had the Wonder Woman record with the stories, right? So that was, again, part of it. Learning, again, how to be a helper, how to go out and serve, right? And then also to be strong. I'm not saying we didn't fight from time to time, because we may have, but that was it. I want to be something. I want to be big. I want to go out and do things and make a change. I find, and going back a little bit, but teaching a drug and alcohol class when I worked there at CDS, and I think it's still true now as well. Technology has been a great thing, but it's also, from, in my opinion, been a bad thing. I think that, that comparison is the thief of joy, and if we don't have our stuff out there online or we're not promoting it or I'm not out there all of the time, then I'm comparing myself to someone who is. And I look at that little girl there, and I didn't need it, right? I didn't need it. I knew I was having a great time. I was having fun, whether I picked on my brothers or not or whether we got along that day or not. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. And part of what I taught in that class and that delayed gratification and waiting on things and making sure we're learning different things. Stuff doesn't always happen like that, right? We had to wait on things. So those are some stories. You figure you work with community, you put things together, you find out how things work or how you support each other, move things along, and then again, bigger than yourself. What does that look like? Who do you want to be a part of? Oh, I gotta move faster, Jared. You gotta yell at me. Speaking of technology, <laughs> you gotta yell at me. So again, digging through this stuff. Keith, I'm this may talking basketball earlier. White River State Games, 1986, when the AAU was just starting around, played with a nice group of gals you see right there for Columbia City. That was our summer league. We went down to Indianapolis to play in the finals down at the state. Basketball was my thing. Loved, loved, loved basketball. I don't think my husband knew that, but my number was 24, so it was his school, so it was kind of fun. But anywho, down in Indianapolis for the tournament, and we're at the Hilton, which was very different back then, downtown, in walks Spud Webb. Who knows who Spud Webb is? Oh, yay! <laughs> yay! Spud Webb, about yay tall, right? But could dunk a basketball and played professionally. I was like, wow, right? I have a signature on the back. So to be able to meet someone like that, who I knew, not, you know, still taller than me, I'm not a tall person, but to see someone in that stature be able to go up and slam a basketball was awesome. 
I absolutely love basketball. Part of what basketball taught me in working in a team, you got to get along. You got to get along. You got to have a common goal. You don't have to work towards something because the goal is to win the basketball game. I still don't like losing, and watching Michigan play last night was horrendous, but you still want to win. You got to have that same goal. You have to have chemistry. I am still in touch with some of those girls that I play basketball with. That takes me back to township schools. We all went to township schools in Whitley County back then. So we didn't go to middle school together. Some of us did, some didn't, but we all knew each other because we played against each other for the last three years, two or three years. So building that bond with folks is another thing and part of being on that team. But Spud Webb was the, that was the kicker that year. But we lost. We lost. We got throttled. You're thinking the state of Indiana back in the 80s, we still had class basketball, or didn't have class basketball, right? So you had the little schools playing the big schools, and it was a big deal. We got down there, and we played some bigger schools, and oh, my Lord. So Corey and Deanie, the twins back there in the back, were our biggest players, and they were tough. But man, we got our butts kicked. Physically, just got our butts kicked. We played well, but wow. But part of what basketball also taught me is in high school, again, I'm not a tall person. Not a tall person. If I were 5'8", I'd have absolutely been, yes. I'd be playing ball. My sophomore year, I got cut from the high school team. I was devastated. My world had completely just, I didn't know what do I do? What do I do? This is what I wanted to do. And I got cut. God loved my parents. I had an aunt that lived in Warsaw. They said, you can go live with your aunt and you can go and try and play at Warsaw. I thought, man. I don't want to leave my friends. I don't want to leave what I have here. What do you do, right? So I let basketball go. Still sucked. It was basketball again. It wasn't my thing. But you let it go. And you think now, well, what would your life have been if I had gone and played it at Warsaw or tried to play at Warsaw? Life would have been different, right? I think the Lord has things happen for a reason, whether we like those at the moment or not. He's just got a lovely little plan for us and how it all works. But losing in basketball taught me there's resilience. Things don't always go my way, and it's okay. I don't have to have control over that situation. A little side note, my picture here, I got my pictures out the other day. We have a son that's a senior over here at Homestead, and he does have my curly hair. And I'm flipping through pictures, and I said, boy, I said, you do look a lot like me. He come walking out with that, and he says, Mom, why do I look like you? <laughs> I said, there's nothing wrong with that. I said, at least you got your dad's height. I said, you're a lot taller than I am, but... So a little side note on that one. And then the other one here, that is my, my younger brother, John. My grandparents lived right off this Illinois road, State Road 14 there in Whitley County. Again, big farmers. My grandparents raised veal calves. We had horses, we had everything, but the sweet corn was the best. So my brother and I, right there on the, right across from my pulse, if y'all know where my pulse is, my grandparents lived right across the road. So that is where we would fill up the back of the truck was sweet corn, and we'd sell it a lot. Not necessarily every summer, but almost every summer. But another thing that I learned in that, one, a little bit of entrepreneurship, of how to get things together, what we were going to sell it for. You got your supply and demand, right? How big you make your sign off of 14. <laughs> but you also got to watch for worms. <laughs> the sweet corn right off the cob, nice and fresh, not cooked, is good really sweet but you gotta watch for the worms but my brother and I learned you gotta work together right sometimes it gets messy and gross 
If any of you had or picked corn off the cob and you've got that, oh, I can't think of what it's called, that nasty stuff on the end when it gets rotten. Some of you, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fun stuff. But learn to work hard, too. Come from a family that was always part of it, hard work. Mom and dad always had a huge garden. That was always, I mean, a huge garden. So being out and working in the field and working with animals, but just hard work was something we always, it's just part of life. Things didn't necessarily come easy, but we worked on them. And you did mention the Boys and Girls Club. So when I started in probation in the early 90s there in Huntington County, I had previously had the opportunity to work through the Girl Scout Council there in Fort Wayne with at-risk youth programs. So Cooper Teen Center was one, the Boys and Girls Club was one. Um, oh, and I'm drawing a blank. Um, cross, not cross, yeah, the Crossroads was one as well. So I would go out and run Girl Scout groups at these centers. Now, a lot of you may think of the Boys and Girls Club in Allen County as what it is today. That's not what it was back in the early 90s. Remember, Joe had a little bitty building at the time, and that's where we did it. But when I started in Huntington County as a probation officer, and I first started with juveniles and did a little bit of adults, but there wasn't, other than the Youth Services Bureau, there really wasn't a place where kids could go and have something to do. There wasn't a, a, you know, a place to congregate or do good things anywhere around. So in my mid-20s or so, I thought there's got to be a solution. And with my experience that I had, I reached out to the national organization. Like, what do I do? How do we get this done? I had two really good judges at the time. The late Mark McIntosh and Judge Jeff Huffelfinger were really great supporters. I went to them with the idea so what do you think? We said, well, okay, okay. What do you need us to do? I said, I need people. I'm not from Huntington. I don't know everybody here. So by the grace of God, and I will say this until they put me in the ground, God puts people in your lives for a reason when you don't know they're, going, they're coming or why they're there. God led me to two wonderful people, <laughs> Don and Emmy Provine. And I can't even remember how Don and Emmy and I got connected. But an older couple in Huntington, and they were my absolute lifesavers. They were my biggest champions for this project. They were financial supporters, but they knew everybody. Don's family was huge in Huntington County. They owned, I can't even remember, the old furnace company. You remember what it was? No. And you big company in Huntington County. Don's family owned it. Any of you know that big old house on Jefferson right before you get to downtown in Huntington County that has now been redone? That was that's where Don grew up. So big place. But anyway, Don and Emmy were great. I got connected with school people, my judges, getting stuff together. Have you anybody gone to county council and asked for money? <laughs> it's fun. No, it's not. <laughs> not at all. But having to go in and, and not necessarily beg, but yeah, I kind of felt like I was begging. I need support. I need financial backing. We need to get this moving. We did. We got it going. I am very happy to say that that was in, oh gosh. See, we've been married almost 23 years. That's been probably 24, almost 25 years ago. It is still doing extremely well in Huntington County. Very proud about that. But what the boy, there used to be, and the reason I've got family, faith, hard work, connections, people, allies, and letting go is exactly what they say. Family, I couldn't have done it without my family. When we first started, there was a small building beside the library that we were renovating. The library worked it out with us that yes, we could use this space, it was an old grocery store. My parents, Eric, my brothers, my judges, Judge Jeff came and helped, literally did all the work ourselves, because we had no money. 
We had no money to get this building up and going. Did all the demo, constructed everything. I'm online begging for office supplies. We're driving around, picking things up, getting things thrown in to get this little building up and running. Would not have happened if I didn't have my family. Because it, it just would not have happened. Faith, another big part. If I didn't have God to lead me and know that we were going to get this accomplished, I don't know where I would have been. No, Jolie had to yell at me. The hard work, obvious, very physical hard work. Not only physical, but like I said, just making those connections with people in the community and meeting people. I had no idea that they had the interest or what they could do and what they could offer. And then the allies, extremely huge. I don't care what you do in life or where you go, there's always an ally there with you. You just have to acknowledge them and find them because they are there. You just may have to search them out. And then I will say letting go. Shortly after the, we had things running, I took over as the chief in, in uh, Kosciuszko County in the probation department. Boys and Girls Club is still going along. Eric and I had gotten engaged. I was driving back and forth to Warsaw, still trying to get this thing moving. And then we get it going. Of course, they want me to be the president. I don't want to do that. It was the first president of the board. We get the board. We get everything going. Eric and I got married, and a year later, Sydney comes along. I stepped away. I stepped away. I'll never forget Jeff asking me. He says, well, and the head, our liaison from the national organization, he says, well, don't you want to be the ED? I said, absolutely not. So that's not what I'm supposed to do. I, I did what I was supposed to do, but I said, my job, I, that's not me. I don't want to be the executive director. I said, that's not where I'm supposed to be. So being able to let it go and turn it over knowing it's going to be just fine. I did what God wanted me to do, and I can walk away from that knowing I did exactly what he wanted me to do. So knowing when to let go. We all have chapters, and I can carry on. There's so much. When you don't think about it, we all have life stories that's made us what we are. But again, those chapters are very, very different. As you can't tell, I'm a huge Michigan fan. IU grad, but a huge Michigan fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I have an, um, my late uncle was a big Buckeye fan, and every year, God love my Uncle Craig, Every year, whenever he'd meet me, he'd come up and he'd say, here, here, I got something for you. <laughs> Every year, he goes, give me a Buckeye. <laughs> I can't tell you the number of Buckeyes, but I did get him back. One year for Christmas, you know those license plate covers? I took his off his car and put Michigan one. <laughs> took him a while to figure it out, but it worked for a little while. But we all have chapters. Eric and I have been married almost 23 years. And it doesn't seem like it's been that long, although he probably disagreed. But life changes. Life happens. And the reason I bring him up is when things get under my skin or I get excited about things, and I don't know if any of you are all like me, but it's like, let's go. Let's do it. Let's just go, go, go. My husband is not that way. He's methodical. He wants to make sure it's all good. And it took me a while. So not only did I drag him in and have him, he helped me with the Boys and Girls Club. Judge Helfelfinger at the time also had a wood floor business. And Jeff and I talked a lot. He was my judge. All right? When I came back and was the chief in Huntington County, you have those really close relationships with your judges. So Jeff had a wood floor business on the side. We talked and I thought, you know, that would be a nice... Nice thing for Eric and I, just getting married, starting, this could be a pretty good thing, right? I throw my husband, I say, I say it really, and you'll probably nod his head yes. Throw my husband into that, and he did it. Left what he was doing, we started this wood floor business. I was expecting Sydney at the time. It was 
It was a lot. We took it to Michigan. We sold our house. We ended up getting into business with my brother-in-law, with Eric's brother. We go north to Michigan. And oh my goodness, the auto industry gets hit way before 07 and 08. So where we were in Lake Orion was a pretty affluent area. And Gary said, it'll be great. We get up there and it just whoosh. So I had Tim at the time. So we've got a three-year-old and a newborn. And we're living with my brother-in-law trying to get this figured out, right? Didn't work. It just was not working. So packed everything up, moved back home, and we started over. Started over. Went from having things to absolute zero. We lived with my folks for a while. We lived with Eric's dad for a while to get things started until we can both get back on our feet. So again, family, faith, hard work, right? And you just, they're chapters. They design you and move you forward. But while I also will also say, God, again, does put people in your path. I'll never forget sitting with Janine Atterbury at the chapel. I think Janine, the world of that lady, and when been years ago, but we're in a small women's group and we're doing the mentors and the mentees. And I'm like, yes, please let me be, please let me be a mentor, a mentee. I want Janine. <laughs> I want Janine to mentor me, right? Different plans. Amy Beams, well, you're gonna be a mentor. I'm like, a what? A what? I don't think I'm qualified to do that. Oh yeah, you are. <laughs> Okay, so again, I think God has people in your path and puts you where you need to be and will stretch you beyond what you're prepared to do, right? He will take you and lead you through it. Never give you anything that you're not able to do, even though it may feel like you're not equipped. He will equip you as you go. But one of the big lessons I've learned over the years, and particularly as I've gotten older, is I can't move too fast. If I move too fast, I miss what I'm supposed to be listening to. And that's part of, I believe, why God and it put Eric and I together. Because he helps bring me back and keep me where I'm supposed to be. And to be in that mentorship relationship allowed me to share with the gal I was mentoring my experiences with that. Because when you're on fire for God and you're doing things, you just, you just want to go and go and go and go. But you can't forget your spouse. You can't forget your spouse. Oh, is that nice? <laughs> so that's part, and to be able to share that story with her, because that she was right where I was. Right where I was. And to be able to share with her, you know, this was my experience. This is what I would encourage you to think before you make all those steps, is don't leave your spouse. So she's been a great supporter. My kids have been great supporters. But the other part I will tell you is your purpose never changes. And I know this has been a big thing that's been around for the last several years is purpose, 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 right? What's your purpose? And I don't know about you all, but when I thought of purpose, I'm thinking, well, it's got to be this big thing, right? It has to be this huge thing if I'm thinking purpose. And then what your passions are, right? They all got to align and everything's got to work. I'm here to tell you that I don't think that's the case. I searched and searched for purpose. And again, God puts people in your path. It wasn't until last weekend sitting down with some friends. Yes, I'm pointing at you. Sitting down with some friends and did this exercise. And I really had a duh. And they had duh moments <laughs> where you're like, oh, well, yeah, well, that makes sense. We did this exercise and it was very quick. Two, two word purpose statements that you filtered through. And I got down to my two. Embracing grace and uncovering trend. And embracing grace ended up being where I am. And when I found out, I thought, oh my gosh, that's exactly what it is. 
I can go back through my lifetime and uncover why was I drawn, why was I drawn to law, to extend grace? Why was I drawn to helping people? Again, to extend grace and embrace grace. Family is all about grace. I don't know about your family, but mine's all about grace. I did a Bible study with a good friend of mine. Finding Lovely. If you've never done it, it's a good one. It's a short one. But I even got grace <coughs> tattooed on my arm years ago. And as I'm going through it, I'm just like, oh my word, it's that simple. Your purpose is simple. Your passions can be the Boys and Girls Club. They can be basketball. It can be my kids. It can be finding justice for people. It can be helping people determine their finances and keeping things going. Your passions are going to change. Your purpose, to me, is your foundation. That does not change. <coughs> but those two will work together and intertwine throughout your lifetimes. I'm telling you, it took me until last week to have that, oh my God, it is that simple. Because again, so, so social media and everything else you're reading and hearing, right? Purpose, it should be this big thing. No, it's simple. It's simple, but it doesn't change. The other thing I want you to think about too, and I was reminded again of this last Friday, is to always be open. Always be open. If your hands are open, open and you're receiving things, you can accept them, right? If I'm going to go up and give you something and your hand's open, you can take it. But if I go up to you to give you something and your hand's closed, you can't take it. You're already closed off, right? So to be open. Be open to change. Be open to opportunity. Be open to people and why they have been put into your path. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But there's a reason. Things just don't happen. There's a reason someone's in your path. Whether it's to learn from them, share, experience things together, grow. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know, if you walk around like this, it ain't coming. Be open to it. Be very open to it. And the other part I want to talk about is legacy. A lot of times when we think of legacy, when we talk about our stories, we think of what we're leaving behind. Right? I want to leave this legacy. I want to do that. I want to leave a trail. I would challenge you to make your legacy what you're currently doing. What are you currently doing to make change now? What are you doing to alter things? Use that as your legacy, not as to what, what's behind when you're gone, but as what you have now. So again, it's just me. I am not an important person. I do what I do. I love God, love my husband. I love my Michigan. But we've all got chapters. We all have chapters. And to sit down, I challenge you to sit down and review your book so far and see what, what's happened in your life that has altered your paths, had you write different chapters. I never thought I would be in finance, ever. My dream was to be in the FBI. That was my dream, almost had it. But that was what I wanted to do. I felt that's what I was supposed to be. Right, Wonder Woman, remember, right? Justice. <coughs> but we learn from each short story, every single one. Losing a business and starting over taught me about resilience and what our balance is and what's most important and everything else will be okay. Getting cut from the basketball team, again, sucks, but I learned it's okay. It's not how I define myself. Think about, again, your purpose. Don't overcomplicate it. It is simple. It is very simple as to what your purpose is. And think about what your goals are. Again, if we don't have goals, right? We can't get to where we want to be. People in your life with those connections, probably my biggest one is enjoy it. Give yourself grace. We all are not perfect people. Don't intend to be. But give yourself grace. It's okay. 
it's okay. And probably my biggest one. As you can see, I did not show up here in suit or dress clothes. You get Gwen Rupert today, who is, yes, a big basketball, well, I would say basketball this year, but a big Michigan fan. I love college sports. If I could have been a coach or something, that would have been awesome. But again, enjoy it. Embrace where you are. Walk around like this if you have to remind yourself to be open and not close to what comes your way. If nothing else, I'm a pretty good example of how the path just kind of does this, right? You never know why or where we're going to be, but knowing you do have a purpose and embracing that purpose and just being you. And my next slide, this is for all of you. Uh, I wish I could get the sound to work. <laughs> I wish I could get the sound to work. And I gotta throw it to Jerry, because Jerry texts me after the national championship and says that. <laughs> Who's got it better than you? And I say, nobody. <laughs> so yes, Mr. Harbaugh. That's one of the biggest things with Jim Harbaugh. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. nobody. I ask you to embrace that for yourself. If you can live your life that way, awesome. So thank you. Thank you for bearing with me today. Next.